Hello fellow scouts, it's time to channel our inner Fritz Hopper and get us our chemist badge. So you've graduated from the tadpoles and are finally ranked up to possum. Great job scouts! By far the most requested Pioneer Scout badge guide has been for the chemist. I finally unlocked my badge so let's go through everything we need to do to get you yours. First up, let's go over all the things we need to accomplish. We have to pass the exam, acquire some lab equipment, craft a whole bunch of grenades, take photos at specific locations, and shoot some animals with a syringer. Well, there's quite a lot of stuff to do, but we are in the Possum Scouts now and we wouldn't be a good scout without a good challenge. Let's start off with the exam. You need to take your exam at an exam terminal, like here at Camp Adams. If you're looking for exam answers, I've linked them in the description. Now let's hunt down our gear. First up, we need to acquire a lab coat. There are a few different types and you should always be able to find a couple of the standard type right here at Gorge Junkyard. There is this red boat with a box that has a couple inside. Next, we need to find some basic lab equipment. There are a few labs that you can visit that will have the things that you need. I wasn't able to find it all in one spot, but you can find everything but the beaker in the lab at Robco. There's also a lab at vault -Tec Agriculture Center, AVR Medical Center, the White Springs Bunker, West Tech Research Center, Fort Defiance, Watoga Emergency Services, and Arctis Pharma, just to name a few. One of these spots should have one of the items that you might be missing. At Arctis Pharma, I picked up the missing beaker and a syringer while I was here, since we're going to need that later. Alright, after that, we need to craft some grenades. First, let's start off with the ones that you don't need plans for. Maltov cocktails, frag grenades, baseball grenades, and hallucinogen gas grenades don't need a plan to learn how to make them. All you need is a tinker's workbench, demolition per card one for a few, and the ingredients. I went ahead and compiled a list of all the items we're going to need to make our required three of each grenade. Let's start off with frag grenades. You just need demo rank one to craft these. Maltov cocktails require beer bottles which can be found all over, like at most train stations, and baseball grenades require well, baseballs to craft. You can find both beer bottles and baseballs in one convenient spot at Wavy Willard's Water Park. You can find some beer bottles on these tables here, and three baseballs at the Knock 'em Down game right here. Hallucinogen gas grenades are pretty fun. In order to craft these, we need hallucinogen gas canisters, the ones that aren't ruptured. Three to four of them can be found at Darling Sister's Lab. The pumpkin grenade is in its own special category. In order to craft these, you need radioactive pumpkin seeds. These seeds are given to you as a reward for the daily quest, trick or treat over at the pumpkin house, as well as the plan being unlocked. There is a bug that I personally have, which will cause the daily to not pop back up again, which is really frustrating, especially while trying to finish up the badge. Luckily, I have found these seeds at player's vendors. If you're looking for them too, they are found under the junk category. Now for the tricky grenades that you need plans for. These plans can be dropped as rewards for specific events and can be found often in explosive crates. The locked crates do have a much better chance at dropping a plan than the unlocked ones, but I have found plans in each. I've marked just a few locked explosive crates of varying levels on this map for you. I've also linked it down below, and I find that Monanga has given me a lot of luck as there are five crates in one concentrated area. I also see the cryogenic and pulse grenade plants in player vendor shops quite frequently, so if you're missing either one of those, they're usually pretty reasonably priced. The repeatable events that you'd want to hit up for the cryogenic and pulse grenade plants are in the Cranberry Bog. Their senses violence, monster mash, coppa squatter, line in the sand, distant thunder, AWOL armaments, and surface to air. These two grenades both need rank 3 of demolition expert and one of science to craft. Now onto the grenade that has so many people stumped. There has been a lot of hearsay of how to get the plasma grenade plans, and I'm currently at almost 900 hours into the game and just got the plans a couple of days ago. I was almost starting to believe that they didn't exist. There are a few people that have claimed that they have found the plans from Enola's backpack in the furthest reaches of Glass Cavern. Also in locked explosive boxes like the ones I have on my map. And, well, maybe they have, but I haven't had any concrete proof in that department, nor any luck. For science, I tried to test that theory out, so I equipped my Demolition Perk card just for good luck, had my unyielding alternate character with high stats to hopefully boost my chances, and experimented with level 0, level 1, and level 2 locked explosive boxes of varying types, 
as I haven't found any level threes. It was super frustrating. I ended up saying some things I regret and now my cat won't even talk to me anymore. Anyways, I stopped looking after unlocking 300 locks, not counting all the unlocked ones I looked into. Maybe you'll have better luck? I'm a huge advocate in sharing information to help others have a better time playing the game, so if it does happen for you, please be sure to share where you found your plasma grenades and how in the comments below. So with that, the chances of finding the plasma grenade plans are astronomically low for who knows what reason. It's been reported that during the early months of the game, the drop was much more frequent, but nowadays it's fairly rare. I had better luck getting my rare apparel drops from the Savage Divide than finding these plans. Plasma grenade plans have a very small chance of dropping from these repeatable events in the ash heap. Here's my experience in finally finding them. I farmed BattleBot and Breach and Clear quite a few times before as I was looking for other items and treasure maps and hadn't run across them. I'm guessing it was close to 75 events, but I don't have that exact number, so I'm not gonna count those this time. While I was actively searching for the plasma grenade plans, I completed load bearing 18 times, this one didn't pop up that much, breach and clear 47 times, and battle bot 131 times before the plan finally dropped for me. So that means it dropped once in 197 plus events. I know some who have had much worse luck than me. I truly feel that if a plan like this is a requirement for a badge, the drop rate should be a much higher percentage. But it does exist, so keep on at it and try not to drive yourself too crazy grinding for it. And for those of you who'd like to know how I farmed the Ash Heap events, I server hopped at Mount Blair Train Yard as BattleBot is triggered by being within close proximity. Speed Demon Mutation is needed to do BattleBot solo, and if the event was available, I'd knock that out and check the map for any other possible events, get those done, head back to the train yard, rinse and repeat. Server hop and repeat. It's been a really long week in the Ash Heap. Detected near Mount but it paid off and I finally got the plans for the plasma grenade. In order to craft the plasma grenade, you'll need your demolition expert at rank 4 and science at rank 1. Now that the most annoying part is over, let's finish off the badge. Oh wait, that's right, it's serums. I hope you've been saving up your caps for these or already have unlocked a serum recipe. Anytime I get close to max caps, I go ahead and buy one. You can buy serum recipes at the Enclave Bunker in the Genetics Lab for a whopping 23,000 caps. Or use your rank 3 hard bargain perk card and some grape mentats and get a much better discount. Still, ouch. Each serum requires something a little different to craft, but you will always require some stable flux. I've linked a handy guide by Kato Genesis about flux in case you need to know more. It's down below. After you craft one, it's bottoms up. Now it's time to party hard, go on a bender, and hopefully avoid rehab. In order to get addicted, you need to use a lot of one family of chem or alcohol. This should be easy if you're after Adams. One of the frequent dailies is to drink 10 boozes. And in order to cure addiction, you'll need a dick doll or one of these red scorpion omelet meals. If only my coffee addiction was this easy to fix. A dick doll can be found in chem containers, and it spawns in the world in a few locations, like in the medical bay at Morgantown Airport, near isolated cabin in this dog pool. And southeast of Site Alpha, there's a trailer where one could be found. Cure some addictions three times and you're all set. The things I do for science. And this is shocking, we don't actually need a camera for this challenge, but we do need to whip out the camera mode at five different labs around Appalachia. You don't have to be in the shot. First on the list is Arctis Pharma. At AVR Medical Center, we'll line up a nice shot outside. And right nearby at Kanawa Nuka Cola Plant, it's a perfect photo op. Head to the mire at Dyer Chemical. We need a shot here too. And last at West Tech Research Center, this looks like a great photo for my Christmas card. And finally, we are almost ready to wrap this badge up. I did pick up a syringer at Arctis Farmer earlier so we can shoot things with sharp objects. If you've watched my Mammalogist badge guide, you already know where to find Radstags, Wolves, and Yaogwai. This Radstag over here at White Springs Resort 
With the syringer, you can also bash the animal with it if you're out of ammo, and that will also count. Wolves are south of Huntersville. And lastly, we wake the sleeping bear in the cave outside the White Springs. And that's that! The chemist badge is done! Thank Mothman, stupid plasma grenade plans. I really hope this guide was helpful, especially with helping you finally track down those plasma grenade plans. I personally am so relieved it's over with. I'm tired of grinding the ash heap for a while. I'm ready to breathe some fresh air and get prepared for these vault raids coming up. How about you? Are you excited for the new content coming up? And what are you most excited for? Be sure to let me know in the comments. And feel free to stick around and subscribe if you would enjoy more guides. And drop a like too, it really motivates me to do more research and get more 76 content out there. Thanks for hanging out with me, I'm Wickedy, and until next time, bye!